Welcome to the Enabling Festival 2021. My name is Daniel and I'm the co-founder of Enable Asia. Due to the current pandemic situation, this festival will continue to remain an online festival for 2021. The festival really aims to challenge, to explore, to shape perceptions and the understanding of dementia as well as caregiving, but through technology and the arts. Well, this year's focus is on taste, and we have curated many different programs surrounding taste for you. So please visit us at enableasia.org to see what we have to offer. Please enjoy the upcoming programs. Hi, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Little Red Couch. And today we have a very special guest with us this evening. She's one of my fellow former colleagues from... Uh, we're not going to tell you where it is, but we were in the healthcare together. So that's giving a hint, right? So, uh, if you guys are watching our show, thank you for watching our Little Red Couch. Because this show is bringing you, giving you, and sharing with you a medical or a more insightful, more have a lot of content in the content. So today, I have the Hello. Ni hao. Hi, so let's, yeah, we're going to do this in Mandarin and English uh, for those who are watching us uh, this evening because we realize that some of our caregivers are not only just uh, are bilingual and sometimes they are trilingual, sometimes they are, they, are, they are many, 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 can speak many, many different dialects. So I can only do a few. So there's English, there's Mandarin, there's actually sometimes a little bit of Hokkien. Mm. So so I, I was formerly working with uh, uh, Ming here, right? Ming, just tell yes. us what you do. I mean, I mean, um, we never really talked about it, actually. Okay. So, okay. So my name is Ming. So I have, I was a um, clinical dietitian for three years in, uh, um, in the pediatric and uh, maternal nutrition uh, side of the house. So after that, then I moved on to uh, being a community dietitian mainly working on uh, public health uh, promotion kind of programs. Yeah, so I'm, I'm currently still doing the, the community side of work. Yeah, helping with um, mainly the school-going children to combat like yeah. obesity. La. Yeah, so yeah. I've been in the industry for about nearly 10 years now. Yeah, it's a long yeah time. so 10 years is a long time, yeah, it's right? it's a long time. Yeah, and, and 10 years to be playing with food and nutrition. How is it like? I mean, tell me what, what's... What has what has what has food and nutrition? Why do you even do what you do? I think that's important. So let our viewers understand um, okay, I, why you do what you do. I think it goes all the way back to during secondary school where we have home economics. So back then, okay, because my age gap with my brother is thirteen years old. So when I was in sec one, he just started weaning, and then there is where home <sighs> economics. Then they teach about you know how to prepare weaning food and things like that, and that got me interested. And then, so when I was uh, doing streaming in SEC2, I decided to go into food science, uh, food and nutrition track. La. And then it's yeah. really all the way. Yeah. So I've been like studying nutrition and food since, actually since secondary school days. Yeah. yeah so so wow. that is how it triggered my interest yeah. um, in, in, the, in the young kids and uh, um, space. La, because I believe that um, nutri we have to start nutrition from young to get yeah. the kids uh, used to, you know, healthy, uh, making healthy food choices and lifestyle since young. La. Right. Yeah. Right. So when I met you, right, I mean, you mm. were giving me, I was asking advice on how to, to, to look good and feel great. I remember that. And then you were telling me, hey, Daniel, less sugar, less oil, less this, less that. And then when I came into the office back then, you were also looking at, oh, then too much sugar, too much this and all that. So I really appreciate that because I actually did lose some weight. So that's that, good news. Course, the brand new, <laughs> yeah, the brand new me, the more muscular me. Uh, but I also took into account that um, nutrition plays a very important role with not only just um, the physical uh, uh, side of things, but also um, the mental piece. So, to and today's topic, by the way, I forgot to introduce is is really is there a real connection between the gut as well as um, our memories, our brains? Okay, what do you so, think? Yeah, so recent research have shown that actually, do you know that we not only have one brain, we actually have two brains. Whoa, so the first what's the brain, second brain? Yeah, yeah, let me share with you. So the first brain is really uh, the brain that is in our head. Lah. 
Okay. okay. So then the okay. second brain recently research found that it's actually our digestive uh, gut. So it's um oh. the, the whole digestion tract. So the function of the dige- digestion tract is, you know, starts from the mouth where we chew and then swallow and then go into our body where the, bo- the body will produce enzymes to help with digestion. And then after that, you know, go into absorption and then elimination uh, when we pass out uh, the, the waste product. So actually, so the gut and the, the gut uh, the digestive system and our brain actually are interconnected. So, okay. so it's like you know, when we are anxious, stressed, you will feel the um discomfort in your digestive system. Like some people, when they are very anxious before exam, they tend to go to the toilet. Yeah, and then I yeah. said I got butterflies in my stomach. Yeah, correct. Butterflies in the yeah. stomach. So this is where um it shows that our digestive tract is actually connected to our brain and they are like, you know, constantly communicating. Right. Yeah. So it's like the other examples is also uh like, you know, sometimes we think of, wow, I want to eat this food. I want to eat that food. But before we even get to eat it, our body is already producing acid in the stomach to prepare for that digestion to happen. Then I hear the crook, 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 right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they are really talk. The two brains are really talking. Yeah. Right. So, so, so if someone, uh, if, for, for those who don't know, if, if, if for someone with a, a certain uh, level or stages of dementia, the inability to swallow, um, to actually have that, that, that ability to actually let the, the, the food substance go down all the way mm. into the, the, the gut and the intestines. I mean, what does that do to their, their brains? I mean, I'm curious. Okay, so... If, um, if it's a bit of a misjoint. Yeah, Yeah, there'll be that misjoint. But, um, but studies so far have not been able to um, determine if, uh, if that disjoint is creating an imbalance in the gut. So it's really a right. new area where scientists are still trying to figure out. Yes, we know that the, the, the two brains are you know, connected and they are... Um, sending signal to each other but we don't really know the actual mechanism uh, yet but studies have found that um, the, the digestive uh, microflora in people with dementia is very different from a healthy uh, elderly but then the right. thing is we don't know whether is it because um, the, dementia, uh, the patient with dementia is not eating well because you know they um, with that, that disease with them, they might even forget how to chew, don't recognize food. So nutrients intake will definitely be poor because of these, um, uh, the consequences of the illness. So we are not sure whether it's because of uh, the, the poor nutrition that leads to a, um, that leads to a imbalance in the, in the microorganism in the gut or is the other way around. The uh, imbalance in microorganism leading to di- dementia, uh, dementia. So that is like really a question mark at the moment. Now. Ah, I like I like question marks. A hey, for the funders who are watching this, right? If we want to find out whether or not our gut can help to bring back memories for our loved ones who who is having dementia, fund an able Asia, and then we will commission the uh, meeting to conduct that research and. And we will get it presented because that's a new area of research. If any of the clinicians are watching, our fellow clinicians are watching, if that's something that you're interested in doing research, contact us because we also want to know, right? Yeah, and and, right. and when you say when you say that, um, when when the person with dementia, the the the, the micro, I don't know the technical mm. terms, right? Microorganisms, the, the, yeah. The microorganisms are functioning differently. So in this case, now I put I put you on the spot, yeah. In this case, what, what then is nutrition for, for someone with dementia? I mean, now we address the caregivers, okay? So I'm a caregiver. I don't know what to administer for my dad. How do I know whether or not he's, he's having proper nutrition or, or is he eating right? How do I know? I mean, how would okay. I as a layman know? Yeah. Okay, so in general, right, we, um, we will follow um, HPB, Health Promotions, Health Promotion Board, um, My Healthy Plate, where... Um, so so a, a plate la. So a quarter of the plate should consist of a uh, vegetable, but maybe for people with dementia where they have got difficulty in chewing, you will have to, uh, you will pre- uh, preferably cook the vegetable soft and choose the softer vegetable. But they should still have the um, the, the the vegetable as part of their my healthy plate, and then um the other quarter should be protein food. 
So it's like maybe fish, tofu, eggs um, might be easier for them to uh, chew and digest since, you know, they, like I mentioned, they might be having um, trouble chewing and swallowing. Uh, if, if let's say chewing is not a problem, then of course meat, chicken, um, these are also good sources of protein. And the other um, quarter of the plate should consist of um, the rice, noodle, the carbohydrates. Yeah. So, um, so, so usually for rice, right, we would recommend a mixture of white and brown rice and then um, mm. add more water so that you, you can cook it soft. Lah. So the, the whole idea behind why we are um, uh, promoting brown rice is really because of the um, nutrition properties in brown rice. So in brown rice, there is uh, antioxidant, there is the uh, phytochemical. So phytochemical is like a, a compound that is produced by plants. So the phytochemicals, there is a B vitamin, which is actually important for our brain functioning. Yeah. yeah. And also fiber. Yeah. La. Mm. So, so what, what are B vitamins? I mean, just you have to vitamin B. Ma. Just, okay. So, just vitamin B na? okay, so vitamin B... Uh, 会在我们的食物就是可以在我们食物摄取到比如说肌肉猪肉我们会建议说是选那种瘦的啦瘦肉啦连肌肉就是要去皮因为我们不需要那个没有这样健康的那个油脂肪啦从那个肌肉的那个
um, it's true to a certain extent, but we still need a lot of um, studies to back up. Uh. So it's still also a, okay. a, a new area that scientists are looking into it. So this is like yeah. a new topic that came out maybe five to 10 years ago. Yeah, so sure. more research is needed. But definitely, um, so, so there are definitely the, the, the probiotics will be able to help us uh, in one way or another. Like, I mean, they, they, they are there for a reason. So like probiotics is actually the, um, the, the, the live bacteria itself that we need in our gut to actually uh, balance out that, the microorganism. So in like, like, you know, when we have a very bad diarrhea, it means that we have got more of the bad um, microorganism and less of the good one. Yeah. So that it's that causes the imbalance, then you know that is where we have the diarrhea. So in our gut, there will always be that good uh, microorganism um, around. So which is uh some people know it as the uh um uh, probiotics. probiotics. Yeah. So probiotics can be found in um yogurt, mainly the fermented food like yogurt, kimchi, miso. Yeah, these are the few things that we can get through uh, from food. Yeah, so, um, but to caution about uh, yogurt is that some of the yogurt uh, or, or those um, probiotic drinks, like, you know, the uh, small, yeah. small... We don't mention names. Yeah, uh, correct, correct. The small, small one, my, yeah. yeah, yeah they're not but, my sponsor, huh? <laughs> <laughs> but these drinks, right, and some of the yogurt, um, there is actually a lot of added sugar to make it taste good, lah, because, you know, um, probiot uh, the probiotic itself can be quite sour rich. Yeah, so we need to be yeah. uh be, be, be more mindful uh, and always go for the uh, low sugar version. Yeah, which yeah. is what really about, available about nowadays. The, clinically, I mean, when, when I go and see my doctor, my doctor prescribed me uh, the probiotics but in the tablet form. And then he asked me to refrigerate it uh, uh, at a certain temperature and then consume mm. it only when when I'm ready to consume it, uh, or based on the prescription, right? So, yes. so it can come in a, in a tablet form as well, yeah? It can come in the tablet form, but I believe that um, different tablet has got different strain. So different mm. strain have got different purpose and function. So yes. it's like so the... caregivers, please don't luan luan bui, huh? Yes. My kuan do bui, my kong, wah, jie, Daniel kong is like, jia, my jia, mi si wa kong eh, huh? Yeah, so must go and see doctor, yeah. okay? Should always yeah, get important um, thing. the prescription from the doctor. Because doctor will know which strain is for what purpose. So it's like, you know, sometimes when we take, uh, like when we, when we are sick, we uh, take antibiotics and the doctor will always give us a dose of the probiotic just in case we have episode of diarrhea. So that probiotics will contain the, um, the, the, the good bacteria that is targeting at, you know, diarrhea symptoms. Yeah, to yeah, develop yeah. Up that. Yeah, so so different, very different. Mm, so very different yeah. function. Lah. I mean, if we if you buy something for diarrhea and you don't really have diarrhea, then defeat the purpose. Lah. No point, waste right? Money, yeah. Yeah, yeah, correct. Yeah. Precisely, it, it's really precisely. waste money. Yeah. So, so how do I protect my gut? Because it's so important, like what we say, it's the second brain. How do I protect it? How do I make sure that I take care of it? Mm. Like my brain, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, so it's generally, important. there are some of the nutrients we should uh, focus on. Or Of course, eating mm. a general balanced diet is a given. Nah. But there are some nutrients that we can focus on, like, you know, antioxidant. Um, so it's like your vitamin C, uh, vitamin E, uh, vi vitamins. So these are easily found from fruits and vegetables. So the brighter color fruit and vegetable will have a lot of uh, antioxidant. Um. The other one will be uh, vitamin B, which we mentioned earlier on. So um, B vitamin is actually help to regulate how the energy is being used in the brain. Yeah, yeah. important. Yeah. Huh? Yes. Yeah. And uh, so um, research has shown that if let's say we are not getting enough of the B vitamin, it can actually affect our cognitive um, function, our brain function. So making sure that uh, we can we are getting enough uh, B vitamin from the um, mainly the meat sources, shellfish. Yeah, yeah the, the vitamin from these sources. And of course, just now I mentioned whole grain, lah, like brown rice. So for brown rice, right, don't get to 100% if let's say the elderly is not used to it. Because you know, lah, mm. changing a habit, they are used to eating those, like, you know, uh, Thai Guo Xiang Mi, where it's so nice, so soft and fragrant, and suddenly you change to a bowl of brown rice, which is so hard to that uh, are eat and digest, they might not like it. So maybe yeah. just do a 10% mix. So uh for example, if you have one cup of rice, you can do it like you know one tenth of it first and then slowly increase the portion. Uh. Um but yeah. I 
we usually recommend up to 20% mix is actually a good amount already. So don't have to go yeah. fully so, 100%. So let's do, this in, mm. let's do this in Mandarin, right? I think mm. it's important for our Mandarin um, listeners out there. I cannot do this part, but it's too technical. Okay, let, me, let me, me try. Me, ah. Ah, okay, let me try. So, because uh, from you, it's more real, you know? For me, it's like, hey, Daniel, yeah. tuan, tuan, kong, tuan, tuan, song, tuan. <laughs> Yeah. I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I 海鲜类食物 你掉一杯去toilet啦,会变成便秘啊,like constipation, can lead to constipation. Okay, so caregivers, please note as well, it is important, yeah? So the mixture, right, we are saying, so it's about 18先,你就掺一点点在那个白米里面,然后就慢慢的,老人家可以接受了,你就慢慢的就增加啦,最多我们是觉得是28先就够了。就是掺28先的那个灶米跟八十八先的白米就已经是够了 so可能就要试一下啦,看哪一个方法是在家里比较容易煮的啦。So at, at this point in time, wow, I got my duck barking. <laughs> so, but it's okay because this show is live and, and it's important because we are doing it in this, amidst this pandemic situation yes. where we have the extended uh, mm. safety uh, measures in this okay. stabilizing phase, right? So we are mm. still going ahead with the festival because the important thing for us is my promise to the rest of the viewers out there is that although the festival cannot be a face-to-face -face festival, um, we can bring the programs to you at the comfort of your own home. So you must remember, stay safe and stay healthy also. But the reason why this year we're talking or why Meiying is talking about rice and it's important because a lot of time the main component of our meals is rice. And we take it from when we were young all the way right up to, to when we are, we are, we are really, really uh, for our elderly as well. Mm. So that's why understanding that simple idea of just having the right mix of your, your rice and how to cook it um, and how, how to cook it for, 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 to, to extract its uh, nutritious value for our own body and our own gut. I think that's really a very good tip on its own already, right? Mm. So any one of you, if you want to make a comment um, the, the comment box are open right now, so you can actually uh, type in some of the questions that you, you, you would like Mei to answer. And if we cannot answer them during this show, because it's only 20 minutes, um, we want to make sure we get back to you uh, uh, even after the show is done, so that actually we can continue this engagement and continue this talk uh, with Mei because she's going to be with us uh, um, here. Yeah, but definitely. maybe I got two final questions, okay? We'll bring it back to... to okay. To, uh, to, you know, that the enabling festival is really a lot about caregivers and, mm. and a lot about uh, persons with dementia. Um, maybe the, the, the second last question I'll ask you is, what do you like to say to our caregivers who are watching um, this show right now? I mean, it's important. I say it a lot of times, but what I say is not really that important. It's what you say because, uh, um, yeah, coming from your perspective, what would you tell our caregivers who are watching? Mm. 
So uh, like I shared with Daniel uh, earlier on, I got a long distance uh, grand auntie who was also having a uh, dementia. So um, when I see that, you know, her family are really um, uh, taking care, good care of her, but there are really moments of frustration where she wants to go to the toilet, like, you know, every five minutes interval and the caregiver have got other things to do, like they need to cook dinner, they need to work and things like that. So it can be really frustrating, um, but it's the disease itself that is making, for example, my, uh, my grand auntie in that situation, but it's not herself, like she didn't want it. So um, I, I think a lot of patience is needed um, by the caregiver and I think importantly the caregiver um, also need to um, have their me time to you know get out of that very stressful situation um, and then uh, recharge themselves and then they will be able to uh, and then come back and then you know continue that caring yeah it's, it's not an easy thing yeah so I hear you I got my goosebumps all up um, caregivers I know it's a tough job but it's mm. okay not to be okay so you've got to ca carry on with your self-care, your own mm. me time. More importantly, know that, well, our elderly are not, or our loved ones are not the same as before, they, but they still have their character, their identity, their personality. They're not trying to give us a hard time, okay? So always mm. remember that. Um, they are going through a hard time, but they're not, yeah. they're not really trying to give us a hard time because they're experiencing it. So... When we come back to that, I want to draw my your 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 attention to the final question I have for you. That's all the time we have, anyway. Um, we always talk about persons living with dementia, right? And we always say, "Hey, how do you talk to a person living with dementia?" But now I give you the opportunity. Imagine you are sitting face to face with dementia itself, right? What would you say to dementia? Um, I will say. Dementia, why do you even exist? Why are you robbing the quality of life of the elderly? It's like they have come a long way. Like some of them might have gone through very hardship in their younger days. And finally, now that their children are, you know, doing well, and that is where they are. They are supposed to enjoy, you know, life with their grandchildren. And then they lost the memory. They lost the ability to... Um, actually care for themselves yeah and only live in the memory which is a very sad thing yeah so I just wonder why do you even exist right on that note I mean it's really uh, an authentic uh, experience I know we, we didn't plan this because yeah. I wanted to surprise me to all the viewers out there I wanted to surprise me about this because um, sometimes you never really sit back and we think about, hey, what would you say to, 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 to dementia itself? And if mm -hmm. you're given that opportunity, um, I shared uh, uh, in previous uh, Little Red Couch that dementia, you have taught me how to take care of my father and, and, and bond with him and see what he sees because I would never know because he doesn't share. But now I have to probe and, 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 and inquire and, and bring out all the things and try at least to, to see what he sees, to hear what he mm. hears um, to the best I can so that I can better take care of my father. So on this note, thank you very much, uh, me for coming in uh, to the Little Red Couch. Uh, this, yeah, this season is about uh, uh, um, part of the Enabling Festival and, and today's topic was really, is there a connection between the gut and the brain? Like what we know, right? now. Mm. Till next time, I'm Daniel and she's Mei. Thank you very much. Okay. Bye. Bye. Thank you for watching our program. We hope you have found this useful and please help us to complete a simple survey by using the QR code provided below. This will help us to improve and fulfill our requirements for the various sponsors. If you want to find out more about the Enabling Festival 2021, please visit our Facebook page, our Instagram, our TikTok and website to see more what we have more lined up for you. The Enabling Festival is in its fourth year now and it certainly has been a very rewarding journey. We hope we can pledge a dollar or more to this cause because this will further help our cause for Dementia Community. Thank you, take care and stay safe.